casinos are going to be taxed 33 uh, percent. If we wind up with slots at the tracks, they're going to be supposed to be taxed at 50 percent. Maybe I missed it. I didn't hear any talk today about any kind of tax or licensing fees. If you want to go after these uh, and stop them from, quote, unfairly competing with the Lions Clubs and the Kiwanis, why? I think I think the, the reality, Bill, is it's going to be very difficult for them under these conditions to, to exist. Even if... Not uh, impossible. Not impossible. It's an economic decision that they will have to make. But uh, it's going to be difficult. So your goal here is not... Is really well, we're not quite saying that. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's... And again... This is a bill that has, that has not uh, gone through any, obviously gone through any hearings. Uh, these are things that certainly can be looked at by the legislature. Uh, my goal was to bring, bring clarity to the situation. I think by the time the state legislature is done, uh, it will have brought clarity to this issue. Uh, and that question that you just raised is a, is a legitimate question. It's certainly something that can be decided by the state legislature. But I just don't quite understand your last remark there about you're saying with, with even without taxes, with just the licensing and the regulation. We're not saying there would not be taxes. That is, that's up okay. to the state legislature. Yeah, but your point was that it would be hard for them to exist under the framework you are. Well, not impossible. Not impossible. <laughs> not impossible. We're not. We're not. That would not be legislating them out of business. The economic model might be challenged. Let's put it that way. Uh, why would that be? Why would they? I mean, if they get the certification... Well, you have a limitation, still, first of all, of five. You can still do it. I think the other, the, the other situation is that most of the ones today, let me get my experts up here from our charitable uh, section, but most of the things that you see today uh, probably will not pass muster when you go to a lab. Is that correct? Mr. Somebody want to take yeah, that? Mr. Kahn, two things, exactly what the general just said. That machine isn't going to meet any kind of pre-licensed certification process. It has to be a process. true game of skill. Okay. So, number two, under the proposed statute, there's similar to the current skill-based games law, there is no, we're trying to prohibit cash payout. In, under skill games currently in Ohio, you can only pay out merchandise prices less than ten dollars plus zero. We put that verb that same language in for these sweepstakes, quote unquote. So what happened was when the skill games were no longer allowed to pay cash, they found another way to do it. And they went and called these sweepstakes. And there's no law in Ohio that says sweepstakes can't pay cash. And so we have put one in that says for sweepstakes terminal devices, we've proposed merchandise prices only, no more than ten dollar plus zero value. And so that's the economic reality that the gentleman was talking about. Why they won't continue but, to but, 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 but am I correct or not? Most most of these that we're talking about, when you walk in in Jeffersonville or yes. wherever it would be, they're not going to pass a certification. You're exactly right. They they would not <coughs> pass a pre license they, they, They've got to develop. They will have to. They would have to come up with a, a, a game that is true true skill, skill. true that skill they, under under Ohio code. That's why I said we're not trying to. My goal is not to reinvent the Ohio Code in this. That's a decision that's not mine. That's the legislature in the past has made that decision. If they want to change, they could. But that's been no indication they will. This line between skill game and non-skill game. Legislature's made that decision. All we're trying to say is, if that's what the decision has been made, then let's figure out how easily law enforcement can determine whether or not this is a true skill game or it's not a skill game. And that's where uh, Joanne will come in and the certification of the laboratories. And most of them that are out there today aren't going to pass. Could we go back to the question on numbers of these machines that are out yeah, there? Yeah, who's got the numbers? I don't have them. Look, no idea. No. Oh, the current number that are out yeah, there. Yeah, the machines are out there, there in Ohio. They, 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 here's what's happened. Uh, this has been a growth industry in Ohio for the last year. years. I mean, it's really taken off in the last year or so. Uh, and they just pop up <coughs> here, there, everywhere. Uh, and we are not regulated, so who knows how many there are. Okay. 
and, and, and one thing is they call themselves different. So if you go on the internet and ask for internet cafes, they're, they're you know, business centers or lucky 777s. I mean, they're just called different things. So it's not just one set name. So you you visited several. Yes. I mean, are there a lot of them from just from your experience, knowing where There's they are? There's a lot of them. them. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Like in Cuyahoga County? Or, or and like in Franklin guns? County. Okay. They're about everywhere. Okay. I mean, they, they, they go in, there's no regulation, uh, there's no one looking over their shoulder, really, and they, they go in, they can set up in a storefront, they can set up any place, and they're in business, and they're making money. Was this machine seized um, that you have now, or how, how did you just buy this, or where'd you get this Okay, where did this, where'd this come from? This one was seized. Where, where did it come from? Uh, it came from uh, Marion County. You, several of you talked about Came aware of this in the campaign or the constituents a year ago told you that. Just to be clear here, these are somewhat the same games that Attorney General Mark Dan was going after three or four years ago, right? Well, this isn't a totally I don't know that. That very well could be. I mean, I'll, I'll refer to the people who have institutional memory here. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Mr. Cohen, they are, they are similar. What is, real, what is developed, um, as I said, when we got the General Assembly when the General Assembly enacted the law prohibiting cash payments for skill-based amusement machines. What has now grown up in the last year or two very significantly are sweepstakes. They've developed a new model. It works different on the back end, in the back room. It looks the same on the front end, but it isn't covered by the law because they're not, it's not a skill-based amusement machine. These are very entrepreneurial uh creative individuals and, and, and you know they're trying to make money uh, they don't want to be regulated and uh, you know it's like the, the balloon you push it one word it goes someplace else and this is what's happened they've morphed into this uh, and, and they've morphed into this because frankly there's a big hole in Ohio law and we're simply trying to fill this hole is this a battle you're ever going to win I mean what if you change this Seems like they're smart enough to come in, and they're sort of like the payday loan people. They come in with a slightly different take, so they're not well, covered I guess by the we law. Take it one step at a time. <laughs> Was there a Supreme Court decision or a court decision on this case that limits the payouts or something? Can anybody speak to how that relates to what you're doing here? It it just lets us know that we were on the right track with limiting cash payouts and eliminating cash payouts. <coughs> The Pickaway County Skilled Games case from the House Supreme Court affirmed that the $10 uh, merchandise prize limitation was constitutional. And so this bill in no way changes that case. In fact, you know, it, it is supported by that case. Getting ripped off today, we're trying to stop it. Police officers are being put in a tenable position today, and we're trying to change that. Uh, charitable organizations that really give their money to charity and that help people uh, are being put in a, in a disadvantage. So there are three things that we're trying to accomplish with this. Bring clarity to the law uh, and, and bring some order to what's going on out here. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you.